Okay, what's going on guys? My name is Draw with Dan and in today's video I'm going to show you how to draw Nezuko from Demon Slayer. So I'm going to be showing you the materials I'm going to be using for this tutorial. Uh, starting off with the paper, I'm going to be using A4 size Bristol board, 250 GSM. 0.7mm mechanical pencil for the sketch. Once the sketch is done, I'll start inking the outlines with my Unipin fine liners. 0.03mm for extra fine details, 0.1mm for slightly thicker details, and then finally a 0.3mm for extra thick details. After inking, I will erase the pencil lines. For the finer, more stubborn areas, I'll be using a Tombow Mono Eraser and a Needable Eraser or Charcoal Eraser which will remove the pencil sketch without affecting the inking. For colouring, I'll be using Ohuhu markers, which are alcohol based markers that work really well to create excellent seamless blends. For highlights, I'll be using a white jelly roll pen. And finally, a ruler. This is to make the 5cm by 5cm grid at the start of the video. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map out the grid using the ruler. I'm going to make the size of the square 5cm by 5cm and I'm going to split it into quarters. Okay, we're going to start at the bottom of the grid. This is going to be for Nezuko's chin. Bring one line to the right and slightly upwards. And then a line left and up for her cheeks. Curve the top round just outside the top of the grid. For the eyebrows, start just above the centre grid line. Draw a line to the right and then angle upwards towards the top right corner and then flatten the line towards the end. I then add a frown line Directly below the eyebrow start drawing the shape of Nezuko's eye Her eyes are quite big and rounded Then draw two eyelashes. Draw the iris so the bottom just touches the centre line. Nezuko's eyes are more like an octagon shape, rather than completely round. And 
now add a vertical line for her pupil in the centre. the eye, draw a line across just under the pupil, then add four small eyelashes at the end. Now we do the exact same process on the left side. When sketching, it's important not to press too hard with the pencil for two reasons. One, because if you make a mistake, it will make it harder to erase. And two, it will leave an indent in the paper. So even if you erase the pencil lines, you will still see where the paper has been damaged. Pressing lightly with a relaxed grip is what I feel is the best approach when sketching. Now with this pupil, position it slightly more towards the right. This will create the impression she's looking right at you. Lightly draw a guideline halfway between the bottom and middle line of the grid. This will be where her muzzle will go. Each end of the muzzle is rounded, with two raised rings at each end, and two more in line with her pupils. One here, and one here. Now add the strap for her muzzle. And indicate the nose just left of the centre grid line and directly above the muzzle. And then add another nose line on the centre grid. Draw some hatch lines here to indicate some shadow. And then add some random scratches. And after this Nezuko's face is complete, let's move on to the hair. Draw a semicircle as a guide.
Adeline here for Nezuko's party. From here, join to the top right corner of the grid. Add small zigzag lines for her hairline. Next, we add her bow. From the top right of the grid, bring Nezuko's hair down, following the grid all the way down to the bottom right side, slowly curving towards the bottom. Extend her hair past her chin. Use the semicircle as a guide to draw in the top of her hair and add some small details. Now indicate the neck just beneath the chin. Nezuko's hair is very long and sharp. Try to create big strands of hair, almost like dreadlocks. About here is where her shoulder and arm comes down. Add a V-shape for her colour on her dress. Hey. Hey. Add a belt just below the colour and add small details on her belt. Now the sketch is complete, so let's ink it. Raise all the pencil lines and refine the inking. Hey. Hey. Okay, now it's time to colour. I always start with the lightest tone and work my way up to the darkest areas last. I also show each colour that I use, so you can use the same colours that I do. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section below if you found this video useful. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. I'm going to let this time lapse play out now, and I'll see you all in the next video.